You're the first one to have said that. The bartender thought I was at most 50. <laughs> you well, it's not like you elves ever get ever look old. Or are you? I don't know. I actually never met any other elves. Are you? I, if they get if they get really old, it starts looking. What's really old for elves? Six hundred years. Depends Longer. also pretty much on where they come from. If they have a purpose in life, they won't start aging as fast. Oh. Damn. Yes. Out of character, it's like, for elves, it's stupidly long is not unheard of. They just yeah. have to have a reason to keep going. Yeah. Just look at fucking Malik. Yeah, he's been alive for millennia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Then um, again, he also has that magical armor, so... Mr... Well, look at his mother. Um, Mr. Billy Bob, yeah. can you roll me awareness with a... Uh, sorry, perception with a plus 20. Uh, that would also go for Miss Lissiara to see if you see this. Exit game goes into the unnoticed game. Uh, port sheet, and there we go. Now we have awareness. Ah... <laughs> uh. So you don't see, um, you don't see uh, Mr. Azor wander off. Uh, Miss Lissiara, you do. So if you would like to add in, you may. No, Lissiara knows Azoroth is more dwarf than actually elf. So she's just like, eh, he's probably just going to go out and drink. He's always drinking. I don't know how he's, he hasn't died of, you know, liver failure. But, you know, yeah. Fine. Also to the point that I'm pretty sure Lissiara noticed that a lot of the time I don't actually use the Elven Gods anymore. <laughs> like I said, he's technically a heathen at this point. <laughs> Reader like, to the race? Yeah, no, I, I still say stuff like for, for Kayla mentioned Kane and stuff like when entering battle, but like... The amount of cursing you have heard me doing of over Assyrian, which is the leader of the fucking Elven Pantheon, is just insane. <laughs> hmm. Like I said, he's not exactly an elf anymore. Yeah. Fair enough. I just let it... <laughs> Very <laughs> unique <laughs> outlook of life is basically, basically, God damn it, Assyrian. Fuck you. Yeah. Anyways. So it could be safe to presume that uh, you will be spending um, the day with your with your spiritual familiar. Yeah, this area will, will talk to a few people in town saying, you know, although this isn't a holiday she usually follows, she'll just kind of say happy holidays to people she knows and then probably just going to go to her room and spend time with the dog. Fair enough. Just come on. Box one is awesome. After a certain, after a little bit, I'll go lock up, aka carry with me the medicinal spirits I bought recently. I don't need somebody downing the wood grain alcohol. Thinking it's just something they can drink safely, and then I'll go back to distracting everybody with my lovely acrobatic skills because it's a bit too early to play the harp. We did buy vodka for cleaning wounds, right? Uh, I bought a six if you look on your character sheet, you will see if your character has bought uh, alcohol for cleaning wounds. How many wounds does a spirit clean? So a spirit is a shot. Um, if you put it in a vial, I say that cleans two wounds. So each vial is two. So effectively we've got 12 wounds worth of disinfecting. And also, depending on if you guys are hit by, like, you only take one damage throughout a combat. Like, you all take one damage. It's classed as a little scratch. I would GM rule it that you could you could use one for all. Um, I mean, six vials should leave us with plenty. Whereas a character who's been mauled and, like, on the brink of life and death, you know, that they, they, they may need an extra one. <laughs> Just asking, because it's really annoying in that a spirit's like five encumbrance per spirit. Oh, don't worry about the encumbrance of the spirit. 
um, just worry about the encumbrance of the of the vials and I think that works out um, a lot better for you I can't find encumbrance for vials so I've been using the encumbrance of the spirit which is five it's fine it's just 30 encumbrance on what I assume is like a couple of bottles of heavy duty wood grain the stuff that makes well, you go blind you can put you can put um so yeah, here's the reason why I said uh, do it in a vial is because a vial is an unspecified weight, so it doesn't have a weight accounted to it. So I would have just ruled it as a full vial is like one, because let's say a shot of alcohol is not is not really that that heavy, um, but you can leave it in the in the cart as well. You know, you can do it however you like. Because I went and bought bottles of spirits. Okay. Yeah, it's why I've took the five encumbrance because I'm having it be proper full bottles, so okay. I can liberally douse the wounds in it if I need to. Uh, so, um, with that, oh, actually, Mr. Billy Bob, what will you be doing? I'll be searching for a particular individual in the tavern. Um, you would see, um, <clears throat> Gotthrind, the, uh, the tavern's owner and head barman, uh, he seems to be setting up and he tells you that, um, the dwarves have rented the place out later tonight, um, and that they've basically invited whoever, um, wants to come. So the, the tavern's closed to, um the public for a couple of hours this afternoon to give you know the to give Gottfried his sister and her child and their workers um a couple of hours off because that he tells you that this this last year went on until the wee hours um and he, he expects no less from the dwarfs But by all means, you are um, you are a resident at the pub, so you can stay there for a while. God damn it! I've just lost the page that I was meant to be on. Never mind. So if no one, uh, um, actually, we have someone else. Uh, Miss, you changed your name. Um, Miss, let me have a look at your character sheet. It's Miss Wilhelma. Wilhelma. What will you be doing? Jazina? Yes? What will Miss Wilhelma be doing? Apparently, um, they're apparently standing there watching me do acrobatics because they yeah, saw Azra. Probably that. I mean, she's an entertainer after all. Probably also drinking. It's the Dwarven holiday, so she won't be passing Hagrid for more gear. So, just chilling, really. Okay, so you will not be going with Azuroth to the Dwarves, then. Fair enough. I mean, unless I'm invited. Basically, you it's like all, I won't intrude on in. someone on, no, on, on you, their you holiday are, without being properly invited. invited. You are all invited. This is not... Oh. He hasn't made yeah, okay. it. Yeah, I haven't I... made it specific to one character, so any one player. You have all been invited, and you are all welcome to come. Um, In that case, that I would make any sense. probably come. Okay, so two of the player characters are going to make their way over to the dwarf's house. Well, I mean, over the night time, I'm going to be there being entertaining. No. Um. So hang on. <clears throat> so what will happen is, the dwarves are going to spend uh well they've already spent all morning drinking they're going to spend all afternoon drinking uh all evening they're going to go to the wolf's head inn and get food and um drinks there so you can see them in the evening that's fine um then you can entertain them then uh but at the moment they will be at haglin's place that's what i meant because as nice as my character likes to be sober when they're entertaining. 
They don't need to make a fallout themselves tripping over the table and slamming into the ground. Uh... There we go, it was shift click. Took me a while. Um, so, Mr. Azuruf and Miss Wilhelma, would you like to place your your tokens on on the map or in the staircase? As you make your way over to um, Hagrin's, no, nope, yep, Hagrin's uh, blacksmith, <coughs> his blacksmith, you see that there is a sign um, that says "Smithy closed, um, drinkers upstairs." And there's an arrow that points around the side of his house, and you see a staircase that leads up, and you hear raucous um, laughter and cheers, and all manner uh, of uh, drunken shenanigans coming from. I'm upstairs. just, uh, I'm just now looking at the fact that I'm still carrying this keg, and I'm like, God, we have to go upstairs. Uh, would you mind helping me carry this? Of course. All right. If you want, I can roll strength. You can, you can roll uh, when uh, perception for me as you uh, come upstairs and see the fellows inside. Twenty-two. Sixty. Miss Wilhelm Helmer, as you walk upstairs, you hear raucous laughing, cheering. As your head go comes above the staircase and you look through the slats of the uh, handrail. You look up and you see about eight dwarfs all sat there. Nine if you include uh, Hagrin himself, which I forgot. Several of them have large shields, um, almost the same size as they are. Um, you see a, a, a wall full of weapons. It appears that they've put all their weapons to one side, um, but the uh, the three dwarves with shields appear to be showing off the workmanship and and hanging them round to each other. Sorry, the four dwarves with shields. And as you look around, you can see that there are many empty kegs. In fact, the the kegs at the top of the stairs you see are all empty. They all have their 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 fronts open. And you can see that it's almost as if the dwarfs have just left them there to dry out. And as you uh, make your way up, uh, you see Hagrin turn. <clears throat> oh now, hello, uh, hello there now. Ah, hello there, uh, Azuruf. Um, Miss Wilhelma, ah, it's uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, um, by all means, come on in, come on in. Uh, we'll try and fit you in somewhere. I am uh, I think we've got a place around here somewhere. He kind of bobs from from one side to the other and his his nose is quite red at this moment. Hi, good. Uh where can I leave my cake? Well you can you can put it over there by the bar or you can you can just uh you can just have it open and we'll 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 finish it off right now. Aye, that sounds like a good way to begin for me. <laughs> and I just, um, once we're at the top of the stairs again, I just grabbed the keg by myself again because I was just worried about the fact that I was carrying up the stairs by myself. And I just bring it up to the middle and just open it up completely. Um, Azuraf, you hear from a dwarf sat in the corner. I'm pinging him now. Um, his shield appears to be different from two of the others. Um, you're not sure that you may have heard from your old travelling companions that that denotes rank um, or a different a different career path. Um, and you hear him, "Ayo hinzoi hata nintō wat niya." And uh, why are the dwarves Chinese? This is scary. But look, a hey, dwarven isn't exactly a written down language. <laughs> hey, hey, hey I'm, I'm just kidding. Okay, um, so they're just, just speaking Kazali. You okay. see uh, two of the dwarves turn round to him. Shit, where was his name? He was... He was... Um, 
Hey, Uzrad, you're quite right there. Hagrin, why is there an elf here? And, uh, and, uh, the other dwarf, uh, perks up, who is, um, a shield breaker. Uh, hang on, we've just heard from him. I've done that wrong. Sorry, not that dwarf. Eh, you carry on looking that way. The two shield breakers, they turn around. Um, by Mormon's beard! Take a look at that Gurdin. Grundin. Have you, ever see, sure. have you ever seen a, an elf talk like a dwarf before? Pretty sure he had dwarves in the family. It's the only explanation I can think of. Uh, I already told you, it's because I spent five decades traveling with them. Uh, uh, Kargan, Kargan begins laughing heartily and uh, slaps his hand uh, on, his, uh, on his side. Aye, aye there, little lass. That was a good one. You think he's got Dowie in his blood? <laughs> I don't think so. I'd wish. <laughs> when uh, when uh, Hagrid pipes up. Now, come on now, come on now. All are welcome on Keg's End. These are two of my good customers. Don't you be shaming them now. This is all welcome in the, in the Steel Weaver house. There's, gr there's grumbling. I I just put down the keg. Aye, maybe this will make up for the fact that I'm an elf. <laughs> At least a bit. Kazaku ni sata minate o hoda. I, I, sto, I, I, um, fuck, what was his name? Uh, Ozad. I, uh, you have a point there. There have been many, uh, many a treaty broken over a battle. I, I, why am Welcome in, in, lads. Welcome them in. There's no point. Uh, we can't disgrace the steel weaver here. That would be that'd be wrong on so many levels. And uh, they all they all kind of grumble and jeer and make all the dwarf dwarfy noises. Uh, but they seem to accept it. And you even see two of them try and scooch up to make room for you on the couch. But it doesn't look like it's gonna work. There. Yeah. Hagrid goes and finds you some chairs. Yeah. I just put the keg right in the middle of them so they can say for Ooh, wrong one. I'm pretty much following Azura's lead because he apparently knows how things should be done here, and I have, I am clueless. Yeah, I just um. Help! Uh, I just help Hagrim find us some chairs and like, hi. This is the first gag in two and a half decade I've actually celebrated, not on the road. <laughs> um, so a dwarven engineer comes uh, comes over to you. Um, he he uh, greets you, Azur. Um, oh, uh, all my dwarves are sounding the same. Hang on. Um, oh, um, hello there. Uh, Welcome, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Dimazar, um, I'm a bit of an odd, odd fellow myself, um, he has, he has a string of, of black powder cartridges slinging about his, uh, about his waist, um, so, uh, by all means, um, make yourself at, uh, at home here, there are, there are tankards over by the bar, but, um, hello there, miss, um, Welcome, oh. Mr. Dwarf. It's uh, it's good seeing a lassie here. Uh, one too many, one too many picks. If uh, if you get my meaning, he has a has a roguish <laughs> roguish uh, smile on his face. I definitely. She she's a she's a sailor. She definitely picks up on a joke. I one one too many. I'm afraid, but uh, unfortunately, none of the uh, none of the uh, Dowie women wanted to. Uh, Wanted to travel, it seems, but uh, it's good. It's good to have you up here. Um, can I get you a? Can I get you a drink? Sure, sure. Like th th that's what your whole day is about, right? Drink. I'm sorry for ignorance. I have not met a lot of dwarves prior to meeting Hagrid. Oh, that's uh, that's perfect. Perfectly fine. It's uh, 
we don't normally venture too far from our mountains. Um, tends to be uh, tends to be bad for us if you, uh, you know, Mr. Stone and all that. But um, by all means, I think we've uh, I think we've got a a, a stool here. Yes, yes, yes. We have a we have a stool, and uh, we have a, we have another stool. He goes and he gets you he gets you both a a, a tankard of ale, but he definitely gives um, Miss Wilhelm hers first. Um, I actually already have my own tank with me on my belt. Is, is it is it the one you exploded on the halfling? No, because I got a new one. Uh, di uh, Dimzard, Dimzard, yes, Dimzard. Uh, just so that you uh, are aware, he has a uh, he's a very short beard, uh, a very short beard. His uh, his features are still young and uh, fresh and full of full of youth. As you look down upon him, you look at the other dwarves, and most of them do seem, you know, very long beards, quite withered and haggard. In like it, their their skin, it, like their face, it ages. The, the creases and wrinkles are more pronounced. Um, but this un engineer is quite a roguish, uh, roguish, handsome-looking young fella, um, and he's quite tall, in fact, for a for a dwarf. You look around, and you do notice he's he is larger. Okay. And uh, he uh, he offers you, God damn it. he offers you a uh, a seat over with the others, and uh, they all gather around drinking, and um, talking about old songs and the old times. He he pressurizes you into into sitting next to him. Uh, keep in mind how many drinks you drink. Um, this will be quite a long drinking spree for some of you. Uh, you can drink up to your toughness bonus without having to take a test. So keep in mind you've had one drink each. Everybody uh, in the club is getting tipsy. My toughness is uh, my toughness bonus is three. So I have three. Uh, what? Okay, this is this is Kegzens. It's his birthday. His goal is to drink himself under the table. So <laughs> there's not a combat situation going on. It's a happy holiday. He is most definitely going to try to drink himself under the table. Just watch as Boris conjures some more shit, and we're gonna have to go drunk fighting demons. I'm sure nothing like that will happen. He says as he smirks. Well, I am, which I am smirking. I am smirking indeed. <laughs> so am I, because I just know all the GM tricks. Uh... <laughs> but I'm, this is in character, so yeah, I am going to just get myself completely fucking hammered. Okay, by all means. Um, so you guys spend an hour drinking with the dwarves over this hour you have your one drink um you were offered another drink but you notice the uh by all means keep it ticked down how many drinks you have you can take an hour off um if you take an hour off you can take a drink off your your mark um but all the dwarves are drinking um and with the end of your first hour the the conversation was fairly cheery fairly you know they they were talking about you know the glory days and and what the dwarfs had and that they're, they're amazing smiths and but then you did notice the 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 talk turned slightly darker um the dwarf that you would definitely know by now's name is um Ozad, uh says something in um in Dwarvish and Kazalid. Okay. In Kazalid. Uh and you hear you see all the dwarves say their their expressions change. they they become far more stony and hmm, like grumbling goes around around the group. And before long, um you hear tales of of battles lost, of Karax lost to time and lost to battle and then Haglin 
speaks. He looks at the other dwarves and they all seem to know. They give him the time. that One dwarf was stopped mid-sentence as he's turned round and looked at Hagrin as he's kind of shuffled his, his uh, seat and uh, moved forwards. I, it's uh, probably about time that I, that I told you my tale. I'm a, I'm a steel weaver. A runesmiths. One of the, uh, one of the proudest things the, the Dowie have. We're an ancient breed of my kinfolk. Well, I was, uh, I was born in, uh, Kazar Krak, and uh, by the welded mountains. My family, we, they, they fell out with the elders and the other clans. Something about pushing boundaries and useless works and so they left they took all the elders all the relics and the runes that we had and they swore that they would set up a, a new hold or a new a new place to live and that the young'uns would be called upon would be brought back Well, you, you can guess where where they decided to, to set up our home, can't you? Uh, Hagrin looks over out of his home. He looks in a direction which would clearly point to only one place. They set up in Mordeheim. The whole clan... They they built a name for themselves where they became renowned. You know, the the hungry had, had never seen like knives that would never blunt and, and and spoons that could could melt snow. They were oddities that they paid the earth for. We built a large forge and became renowned for our works. And then the day came. All the young'uns, myself included, were called upon to join our to join our parents and our our forefathers in our new home. So we left. Anxious and excited, it was it was a new adventure. Until we saw that accursed meteor thing in the sky strike by the time we got to Siegfriedhof in the distance it was just fire and screaming once the fires broke we marched in swearing on a on a crate of bugmans that we would we would reclaim what was lost and Return home to the world edge mountains. We didn't expect the horrors that lay lurking, waiting beneath that accursed city. The hungry here were, were shocked and amazed when they saw a, a war band of, of Grimwell equipped dwarves come marching through. They were even more shocked when they saw us running back with our legs, with our tails between our legs. Carrying the mortally wounded and dying. Before long it was just a few of us and we had managed to make it close to where, where the forge was, but Daffy didn't see it coming this this abomination just crushed him in one great swoop and then Zelda, she got covered in some corrosive. 
She was screaming and melting at the same time. We took refuge in a pub. But the beast came through the other wall. I mustered my strength and charged at it with my axe in hand and shield at my side, and it brushed me away like I was nothing. I went flying and crashed into a wall, and darkness took me. The last thing I remember seeing was was Damatus, the crazy, the crazy fool. He went flying through the air with his two-handed sword, stabbed the beast in the neck. When his girl in the in the full plate, uh, Remy, dived between her legs, between its legs, and drew her sword straight up into its gut. I woke up five days later in my forge with Peter looking after me. He told me I was the last one to that none of us made it back. I'm the last steel weaver, the steel weaver clan, and I cannot leave this place until I have reclaimed what was lost, and I have, I have fulfilled my oaths. As he says this, he looks towards the room where the ale is stored. And if you look into that dark room, you can just see a keg aged by time, covered by dust. And you may even see the runic names of all those who took that oath. As Hadgrin finishes his story, you see the other dwarves slam their shields into the ground. I, a steel weaver, should never be left alone. You only need to ask Stone Cousin and we will come. We will march upon that accursed city and reclaim what was lost. I, there's no point in putting yourself through this battle alone, steel weaver. We'll be by your side at only a moment's notice. I, I, oof, the dwarves bring this up and Hadgin just... I just, I just go in and I just, as well as... Aye, you can count on me too. You only live once. I'll go too. It breaks my heart to hear you all say this. You don't know what wolves you're taking and what horrors await once you enter that city. Aye. A few weird days ago, we sailed past it. Just a mere sight of that city. Made all the men on board that ship sh just, just shiver. Just the mere mention of it. If we are to go in, we will need to be very well prepared. Just but no oath goes unfulfilled. Just what exactly is in that city? The forge of my of my ancestors. The hammers, the tools, the bellows. They took it all. They emptied out their vaults and their forges in the misty mountains and left nothing. Uh I was thinking more along the lines of Eldritch Abominations. I you crashed it. into that city. You I have heard stories. There are things there that no Dowie has ever believed in. The uh, things except that should one. not be. I believe now. I, if you believe the tales, that entire damn city is filled with undead demons and even ratmen. The beastmen, I, they've been, they've swarmed that place, and he kind of gives you a gives you a look um, when he says that. What? 
When you say rat man, you mean like especially big rats or? The I don't know what the damn things are. All I heard is that they're called the rat men. For all I know, they're just another version of beastmen. The dwarf who doesn't speak common. I don't know what the and he kind of spits on the floor, and you see, you see the dwarves just nod, and a couple of them respond, um, but not in, in, uh, in common tongue, in the common tongue. Um, Hagrin kind of looks. He, you can tell that the dwarves definitely know something that they're not letting on. Tell me, lassie, would you believe a, a madman if the whites of his eyes told you that he was speaking the truth? Well, to be honest, I haven't believed a lot of things before I came into this region, and uh, let's just say that fairy tale suddenly stopped being the Aloe Fairy. We're going to say that came from uh, Dimazar. Is that guy hitting on me or something? A little bit. Uh, well, lassie, I can tell you there are the ravens of a madman and the ravens of those who have seen things that they perhaps should not. The Dawi have a uh, an old enemy. Uh, the common name is uh, Skaven. Most of the hungry you see that would speak of them would be told of as mad. They are not. And you should be wary of them. They like to come in the darkness of the night when your guard is at its lowest. For such a young dwarf, he has the look when he speaks of them of a, a horror that he's holding back. And if you would like that will be another hour past. If you thought your uh, your character would be drinking another flagon at that time during that story, then by all means, mark Definitely. it off. Yeah, most definitely I would have died another time. You hear more tales of sadder times, of times gone by when battles lost that should have been won. But almost at the sound of a bell outside you hear the dwarf the dwarves kind of look up and one of the dwarves who is quite large you know for, even for a dwarf his his girth is quite quite some um you just hear this and uh and he's hey hagrin not long now is it and hagrin kind of looks out of the window and he's well, uh, we got another hour or two. I mean, we can always uh, go outside and uh, see what uh, what fun there is to be had, or what drinks, uh, what food there is uh, still in the market. Um, would I have, in this period of time, told my story as well or not? By all means, if you wish to tell your story to uh, the group of dwarves and to the group in a whole then um, another drink can be had by the dwarves and by the player characters as well if they wish and okay i'll mark down third three then. Hey. i uh i take it most of you don't uh, take kindly to my uh folk then again, I don't take kindly to my folk, but perhaps I 
and hearing all your stories as I should explain why I have more respect for the Dawi than I have for the Azor. I, uh, I was never born on the homeland of the elves. I was born here in the Empire, in uh, the coast city of Marienburg. My uh, parents run a uh, business there. At a young age, I uh, was uh, trained to be a uh, delivery. I was a traveler, a scout. I uh, brought around their messages for their businesses further and further until, well, until I uh, decided to strike out on my own, become independent. I, uh, I needed companions. And uh, on one of my travels, I uh, came across a uh, group of Dawi. I, uh, though they were initially very uh, skeptical of me, we uh, were both headed to the same direction. So I asked if I could travel with them, safety in numbers. We did. And, well, from that one moment onward, we, uh, I became part of that group for a bit, for five decades. Five decades ago, that is. For, uh, last year, when we were traveling, through the wild. The roads have been uh, blocked. The storms around us had uh, thrown over the trees and we were forced to take a detour through the woods themselves. Those accursed beastmen ambushed us. I, uh, I tried my very best to save them. They tried their very best to save me. In a way, they succeeded and I did not. I was the only one that made it out of life. Me and one of the horses pulled the cards. I just started looking for a way to forget. I had known these men for five decades. Though we had started with animosity, they had become my best friends. And I, I saw them slaughtered before my eyes. To those foul creatures. For every one of them we took out, two more appeared. And with the way that we were taking it down, if they had started with five and we had started with five, by the end we were five to fifty or something. It was a miracle I even escaped. If they hadn't told me to escape, I would have died that day too. I, uh... Traveled eastward, away from what had happened, until I uh, needed money, so I uh, took up a job. It is uh, the same job I uh, met uh, Miss Wilhelma there. Since then, yeah, that's essentially the story of how I ended up here. It's not a story I have yet told anyone else. Never had anyone else to tell it to. I spent most of last year in isolation, just surviving off what little funds I still had remaining. One of the um, Dawi towards uh, 
the one on the left of um, of Hagelin pipes up. Aye, it's um, it's a noble, it's a noble deed to lay down your life for a for a friend and companion. Yeah, yeah, do them proud, lad, by by keeping their memory alive. Don't you worry about that. They, they, uh, they always mentioned what clan they were from. Well, I think it might have traveled the wrong way for it, but in a way I want to honor them and their clan by fighting for it. You know, it's... Perhaps the weirdest thing I've ever heard of, but just my eventual goal to make up for my failure in protecting them and make up for the disgraces that my race has caused the Dawi by protecting their hold for as long as I still draw breath. I just... Um, I need to figure out a way how to get there. I just uh, pick up my tanker again. I just swig down the last little bit that was in it. <sighs> just smack it back down on the table. All the dwarves kind of do the same, like they, like at the end of the story when you, they see you down in your, um, your tankard, they all do exactly the slave, same. And any of them that have like a, a wooden table or a, or a, um, or a chair arm, slam their tankards down um, in kind of acknowledgement of your story and your, your journey. Ah. I'm just trying to look for what Bill and Ben no sorry uh, Bill and Ted bought and what I need to roll on and I think I found it okay they bought something ridiculously stupid haven't they <laughs> uh, Mama Michael's cure for what ails you It's a cheap cure-all that has hilarious effects. Um, <laughs> Gotta love those. <laughs> oh god. Oh, do we hear them outside? Is why why are they buying Redneck Special? Um, so you will, they'll be doing it in the, in the pub. Um, where everyone can see. Um, because a cure-all is 11 gold plus the handling fee, which is 22 gold. Um, Mama Michaels. Mama Mike. Mike. Malkins? Mama Malkins is uh, 18 silver. You know, double that, it's still within their still within their price range. 36, just in case you were wondering. I can do maths. Anyway, uh, yeah. So all the dwarfs, um, are, whilst your story was being told, that that was like another hour um, in story time. Yeah. So all the Bye. dwarves grab another flagon. Mark the fourth keg. Yeah, the uh, fourth tanker, which means I, yeah. Uh, okay. That's one of my toughest bones. Can you all go just, uh, to your consume alcohol skill? Uh, you will see it under your basic drinking? skills. Uh, they are only drinking ale, which is a routine, which is a routine test. Yeah. My, uh, uh, sailor's fortitude. Also, why did I say no voucher attribute found? I do, I do say one last thing, though, after I finish my story. You know, in a way, finally getting this story off my chest. I, I couldn't wish for a better birthday gift. Just noting it down for 
keeping track. Um, routine, I think, is like a plus 30. Ah, thank you. Routine's plus 10. Oh, okay. I was... I was okay, checking. so a plus 10, so that's a start so, of 28. So that's still a massive call. failure for me. You roll flat yeah. next time. Okay, I'll roll flat next time. So I'm starting to get pretty goddamn hammered, and it's starting to show, like... After the story, it's pretty clear that just Zerif just starts drinking even heavier, like he. So I believe um, yeah. once you once you fail a test, you have to fail it three times, I think. Four times, and you're stinking drunk. However, uh, he. Ne I'm just checking because he's his weapon skill, ballistic skill, agility, and intelligence tests are now challenging. Yeah, he takes a minus to them. Um, so. As you all um, sit about and have another drink, um, this would be the start of four hours. No, sorry, sorry. three hours have passed. So it's now um, about three o'clock. Um, the dwarves are getting I think hungry. Four hours passed. Four hours passed. Okay, four hours have passed. So the the dwarves are getting are getting hungry now, um, and they actually make their way out onto the street. And this is a bit of a this is a bit of a amusing occasion because they all stumble about. You know, some of them who haven't got up in a couple of hours get like hop off their seats, and all of a sudden, like their their legs have gone, and yeah. they're like stumbling yeah. about. And I I just get up as well, and I fear this is a human sized building, is it not? Still, or yes, it is. Yeah, I am still pretty goddamn tall, so I forget that I usually just sort of. Um... I get up way too quickly and actually just like, Dunk! I score one for the building. <laughs> yep. I, I don't think that's gonna hurt more than the hangover I'm gonna have, but it's gonna be worth it. You're uh, having also, hangover, on. self boy. Also to note, uh, two of the dwarves who are with you are, were actually the dwarves from the from the caravan that the, were protecting the halfling. Yeah. So you do get some you do get some talk from the dwarves uh, talking about their halfling boss and saying how the moot is actually like one of the most relaxing places they've ever been, and they've never seen so such green such greenery on rolling hills. However, when you all get outside, you get a smell. There's a smell in the air, but a good smell. You smell pies. Sweet, savoury, meaty, fruity pies. You look over and following your noses, all the dwarfs, in fact the dwarf who is the roundest of the bunch, is almost being led by his nose and gut as he makes his way over to a vendor who appears to have set up for Keg's End. Uh, most of the appliance, well, appliances, the, the fire pit behind her is out, um, and it appears that she's no longer doing any um, cooking, but it does appear at the very least that she has pies out. They are all, some of them are still warm. Um, so, I would like everyone who is drunk, which is basically you two, to make me a willpower test with a minus 10, um, or you'll buy a delicious pie. I mean, the, the sailor passed. Oh no, technically she's drunk. She's not on her way to being stinking drunk, but she is, she is drunk, so... Um, that pie does smell rather good, Miss uh, Miss Wilhelma. Uh, oh yeah, she's just starting. She's not actually felt the effects of her drunkenness yet. Yeah, she's not gonna, taking any negatives, um, but she is still technically drunk. Um, so this, so basically, it's a special event for drunk people. So you only have to drink above your your toughness bonus for this to take effect. It's quite fun. Oh, she has disappeared. Ah, I see why she is taking 
taking a moment. Well then, let me come here and unfairly It's a good thing being drunk doesn't affect your wow. willpower. She succeeds. Incredible. So, the dwarves, uh, who are... Oh, <laughs> are, you, are you back? Sorry, I apologise. I rolled for you to keep... You passed. No, no, that... it's fine. Don't worry. My willpower is still shed, though. So, uh, Hagrin doesn't eat a pie. He's he's he knows what's waiting for him in the Wolf's Head Inn. So he doesn't. But two of the other dwarfs, they they fail. They um they smell the pie, the meaty goodness, and they decide, yeah, that is what I'm having. So two of the dwarfs, I'm not rolling for all of them. Um, so they have to do. They they munch down these pies, and the gravy is just dribbling down their cheeks, and you can smell the taste of sweet meats and roasted um, chestnuts and a very thick gloopy gravy they're also Damn. they're also not meant to still be singing however all the dwarves pass their tests they eat down their delicious pies and they were indeed delicious they want the fattest one turns round and he's just got gravy dribbling down his cheek and he kind of licks for it and I that was I that was a good poi that was oh 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 Hagrid that was a good starter but we we gotta get going. My the beast has been fed now and and it's it's angry. It needs feet you just hear this <laughs> of the sound of a stomach that's got too much alcohol and not enough substance in it. No, I took the whole sh bloody thing. You, no. You go that way. Brilliant. You all come with me as we fly off to another map. Because you all you all succeeded in your tests and uh, nothing bad happened, so yeah, there's, there's no point hanging around on hanging around here we might as well go to where the action is going to be next oh look some, <laughs> some people are already here oh salad oh that did not salad. work the dwarves did not ma magically appear batman transition na, 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 na. There we go. They all magically appeared. I did it on the wrong, wrong screen. That's why. Uh, I know we have a couple attack of... of the clones. I, I know. Attack I know. of the clones. I will, I will delete the extras. I, I just Execute delete order my... sixty-six. Oh, did you delete your? Okay, you're gonna have to put yours back. That on. will be sixty dollars, sir. The hell it will. I mean, if he wants to execute order sixty-six, he's gonna pay for it. The good point. The uh, dwarves all find themselves a table. They all they all cluster in around, and um, you can see Hagrin uh, as he sits down. You note rather that Gottfried kind of gets an electric shock through him as the as the um, the bar wenches and the other patrons kind of. There's almost a sense of excitement as the dwarves barrel through that door. They come flying through that door in just a drunken mess of bodies, arms, beards, and sweat. Um, a lot of the bar patrons begin having a little chuckle between themselves as uh, as they see these dwarves barreling through the door. And very quickly, without being called for, um, Gottfried has already got drinks heading over to them and uh, sweet meats and different delectables heading towards them. Uh, Miss Gabrielle, you would have most definitely seen the uh, the dwarves and your companions moving through town. Sorry, I forgot about you for a moment. Oh no, it's fine. Because of how much we were sitting around, I was just going to go do something else. 
Well, I was going to say, you are now like in the bar or you've you've seen them. Um, I've been getting ready to play music. Sure. Trying to decide, do I wear my fancy clothes or do I wear my normal clothes? Okay. Um, so as the dwarves come barreling through the, uh, through the doors, you see um, that a couple of them, um, in fact, the the younger one uh dim zed dim zed the dwarf names are weird uh he gets up on the stage and uh a couple of other um dwarves do as well and uh they kind of talk about uh they'll be the first ones to get the the first song in and then they can carry on and uh keep drinking is at this time another individual steps through the door. Why am I alone at the table? <laughs> I wouldn't just like, fuck you. <laughs> you see how it is. Very well, I'll go see what my people is. Oh, oh fuck, God. I act. Clone army, shit. Uh, Order 66? Yes. Order 66. No. Order 66 with elves. N not this racist music! <gasps> yes, this isn't the racist one. This is the uplifting one. Um, maybe he was further down. I, I need you to delete my evil clone, place. It's going Does on about. Does he have an uh, evil it's beard and no. It's canon. They sing this. They just have actual pictures to start digging a hole in the floor. I mean, they did make the underway. Uh, so, yeah. Plus, this does go on about all their good qualities. Psst. Psst. Hey. Hey. You Billy Bob. I'll just sort of like finish off dining a drink and then look at him. Yo. And nod. He gives you a, he gives you like a nod, an upwards nod. But after I finish the drink, I slam it down and go, mm, love me a good mug. He he gives you a little wink, and uh, he uh, turns to the barman and uh, orders himself a drink. Um, he kind of gestures to you like, do you want to stay down here and talk, or do you want to go somewhere else? I'll just sort of nod my head in a, in a direction as if to be like somewhere else. Okay. Um, he takes his, uh, he takes his, his ale and, uh, uh, nothing like a, an ale and a shit. That's the best way to go about things. You just, uh, yeah, smoke ale and a shit. That's, that's the way, uh, fucking what these dwarf and downy, what the hell? And uh, he kind of leaves the establishment, but um, you get the feeling he didn't go too far. Uh, I'll wait for him to leave. I'll count a little bit. I'll look around. Is anyone looking at me? Um, if anyone would like to have a look around the bar, um, at the moment there is a musical band of dwarves that you don't see every day. So there's a minus 10 to all perception tests. Get out with your minus tens! Here comes the money! So, um, Wilm Helmer, you definitely see an individual come in. Kind of, he looks a bit dodgy. He looks like he's, you know, he's from the rougher part of town. And you see him sit next to Billy Bob. What's your perception test? Uh, minus ten. Okay. You 
too, uh, Gabrielle, as you're watching the dwarfs singing and you're kind of enjoying their, their musical tune and you've never, maybe you've never heard like how the Dowie actually sing and you're quite impressed but then you do see this individual come into the bar and he walks around the outside, um, a rough looking individual and he goes up to the bar and orders a drink and appears to to share a word with uh, Mr. Billy Bob before exiting with his pint, talking about something about taking a shit and drinking a beer. That's kind of gross. You'll just see Billy Bob, like, from behind at least, if you're not, like, in the conversation, you'll just see him, like, not really looking at the guy, apart from when he first sits down. Just going to give a judging look at Billy Bob. wonder what he's done now. Even when it looks like I've done nothing, you know. Let's face it, Gabrielle has caught on way too much there. Do I notice her looking at me? When I start looking around well, after you, su you succeeded your perception test, so as you look round, um, as... I'll look Sorry. round after I see as him he leave, leaves, though. As he leaves, you look round and you do indeed see your companions watching him as he leaves. And perhaps one of them even gives you a, a sideways look. Do they? It's curious. It's not like... It's a, a curious with a hint of suspicion. It's, it's not even bothered to be hidden because it's a... What are you up to? Uh, when you do that, I'll just sort of shrug. It's also wondering, where's the bucket? You'll, you'll see, you might see uh, an ale in front of me, and if you do, if you are looking at us as he first sits down, you'll see me finish the pint off. And slam it down. Uh, can I wait for them to stop staring at me <laughs> and then leave? They don't keep staring at you. I'll just sort of shrug at you and be like, what, what do you want from me? I haven't done anything yet. You gave yourself away there. I haven't done anything yet. I'm not going to do anything. Leave me alone. I didn't say it. I didn't say it, but that's the kind of look I have. No, I haven't done anything. anything. <laughs> and I'm all... And don't forget, Gabrielle's a woman. She knows what you're thinking. They can smell fear. I'm not scared. I'm just like, but I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> and I'm just like, why? Sure, you can wait five, ten minutes. Um, and then if she continues to stare at me, I'll just get like a, a stick out. And then I'll just sort of walk outside. And sure. I'll light it by the fire as I go past, and then I'll go outside as it's lit. Sure. That's perfectly fine. Um, as you go outside, you see an individual um, sat on a chair. He's got his pipe, his uh, flagon in his hand, and he's smoking a pipe. Um, the smell that comes off um, his pipe is not a nice one. As you walk through the... Uh, through the cloud of smoke your eyes sting a little bit and you you imagine there's probably like sawdust or something in that like that's not I will right say sort of ask him where he gets his tobacco from and also what kind of pipe does he have quite a common um um quite a common clay pipe nothing special uh, no, so no something design. Cheap, then. yeah just something cheap something pretty nasty Yeah, clip pipes can be alright. Well, it's the it's the stuff they sell in uh, in Lynn Bottom, you know, the uh, the outskirts of to town. So, um, you wanted to uh, you wanted to meet me. You wanted some info. I'll just sort of straight come out of it and just say, "Well, I've been looking into becoming a businessman. You see." can't become a businessman on your own. You need to know people. Or at least it helps. Well, yeah, I uh, I understand that, but um, 
what part would you uh, would you be looking for me in? I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I can uh, I can do certain tasks, and I know how to get rid of certain goods. But um, you know, doing that in the city has has a lot of risk to it. You know. I thought I heard rumours of a particular place, you know? And I forgot, did the uh, halflings I know give me just weed or weed and tobacco? Uh, they just gave you a, um, like, two hits worth of, worth of weed. Okay, then. I'll keep, I'm keeping that for myself, so I won't, I won't give it to him. Are there any... I'd sort of offer him a drink and say, Are you sure there's, there's no particular places to, to go for business? Well, um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, always a place to do business. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're looking to meet with other professionals like myself or partake in their um, uh. in their wares by all means you can um, you go to this location and he tells you um, the location of a uh, building in Lynn Bottom which is basically the poor end of town and he tells you the house to go at and uh, to not I have the smuggest fucking look on my face when he's telling me he tells you to say the password of um Hang on, message it me before you say it though. Okay. I think he wants to say it himself when the scene happens. Okay, I will do that um after the episode, because I can't bring up Discord at the moment. Okay. And uh if they'll let you in, you know, um no discrimination. We, uh, huh. everyone's gold is gold, isn't it? Sounds more classy than most places. And then I'll sort of like nod my cigar to him and then go back inside. And as I go back in, though, or before I go back in, I'll undo like my zipper. Or like whatever, like if I have string there instead or something, she. And then as I walk in, I'll sort of like be doing it back up. Yeah, I imagine you've got like a like a little uh, like a shoestring kind of a deal that that does up that way. Um, your clothes aren't particularly fine. Um, the the man outside sits there for a while, um, finishes off his his drink, and then uh, will make his way back to wherever the hell he came from. <clears throat> and then I'll just go and sit exactly back where I was. And I'll order another drink. You sure? You can get another drink. Um, to be honest with you, I was actually trying to look at my notes to see um, what I items... I the price of drinks, by the way. Uh, what items what drink. you were going to have to go and search for. But I'll find that another time. Ooh, Bill and Ben. Uh, Bill and Ted, I forgot about them. Um, drinks are... If he tells you what drinks he needs, I can look up the price. It's just an ale. Okay, just give me a sec to get to consume alcohol because they're basically on top of each other. Uh, a ale is four pennies for us. All fees wait, already four. calculated. Yeah, a ale is two pennies normally. Ah, okay. So, as the night draws on, uh, a slight bit more, um, before the fifth drink is drunk, you all see Bill and... Uh, Oh, I should put them on the map because I don't think they're there. 
you all see your hirelings, the two people who have been working hard um, to protect your asses in some cases. Um, Ted is well on the road to uh, recovery after his ordeal. And they sit there and they seem quite excited and they have a talk between each other, uh, between themselves. And uh, they take out a, a small flask each and they kind of, oh crap, they kind of cheers each other as, as they drink. Um, a d10, five and lower is Ted. Six and higher is, ooh, okay. So Ben drinks his potion down. And with an 82, what happens to him? Is this quack medicine? Because an 82 means it might actually kill him. If it's quack medicine, 82 is he has to make a successful toughness test or lose 1d10 wounds regardless of toughness. No, 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 it's not, it's not that. So, um, hang on a minute. He must make, regardless of his toughness bonus, and must roll, roll multi, hang on, multiply rolls with the same result. Oh, he has to roll again? Oh dear. So he then gets a 52. So, he gets a uh, get out of my belly. The draft automatically removes a disease, inflicting the character as well as any poison. So Bill has been he's been fixed. Um, if the in bidder in mm, the in bider has in biber uh, has both a disease and poison. Uh, oh no, he hasn't got a disease and poison. Okay, uh, the um, drinker takes one wound uh, regardless of toughness bonus, and he rolls again multiple times with the res uh, with the result. So, he only has a disease. Um, so, that means Bill is cured. He, he kind of retches and squirms and skitters and he doesn't look particularly well at all. But, all of a sudden he kind of like... Ted, this doesn't feel so good and I'm not sure if... And, and Ted kind of... But, but Ben, your breath... It smells right. It it does it doesn't smell too bad at all. I think it worked. Um, Ted then quickly hurriedly drinks his. I know I said he drank his at the same time, but he drinks his and it's not so good. Oh, actually no. So oh no. Oh my god. This is brilliant. This is amazing. So Ben feeling like quite good and like. Wow, it worked. It it worked. Ted's like, oh, wow, fucking... Go, 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 go. And he drinks it, and all of a sudden he's... Ugh. Ted, uh, uh, Ben, I, I don't think... This doesn't quite... He runs his hand into his in, onto his scalp and begins scratching his head. And to his shock, his hair begins to fall down in front of his eyes as... My hair! My... my my beautiful hair! What? What? He he runs his hand over over his scalp, and all of a sudden he is bold. The drink, uh, the drinker's hair falls out, and oh, hang on, and bursts dozens of blood vessels in his face. So you also see like bruises begin appearing on, on uh, on Ted's face and forehead. Um, yeah, I now need to put in that. Uh, that Ted is now bold. What? Why? Ah, why are you ingesting gonna... random fluids? We we'll walk over to him and go, Are you okay? I, I just wanted to get rid of the flatulence. <laughs> oh, my Sigma, why? Why? <laughs> Don't worry, hair grow back. And, and then I, really? and I like lean over to one of the dwarfs. No, it doesn't. Oh, actually, oh, if I had them mixed this whole time, I think I have. Like their their ailments, but I'll just turn them around. Yeah, damn it! You specifically renamed them so you would stop getting them mixed. 
But I think I, uh, yeah. So their their ailments should have been switched, but that doesn't matter. I will I will change. I can just copy and paste. It's fine. So um, oh wait, no. Yes, yes, that is right. So unfortunately for um, for Ted, he still has his uh, his f powerful flatulence. Um, the cure all did 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 not work. Um, however. Ben no longer has breath that could, well, stop an orc in full charge. Um, so he is now far, far better. And one of his life goals have been achieved. So he gets another 100 XP. Wait, is his life goal to stop burping? Uh, so Bill and Ted both have a life goal to get rid of their ailments or diseases. Um, which make them social out outcasts. Um, Bill and Ted have a desire to one day have a family, and having really stinky breath and constantly farting that makes people's eyes water does does not endear you to that. I'm afraid. So true. No matter how the medicine goes, I'm sure it'll work next time. And we both know your hair'll be back soon enough. He kind of looks up at you with these puppy dog eyes, like. Really? I, uh, I hope I see Kamara. I hope it does. When I turn around with like a, while well, I'm taking a big gulp and I see his hair fall out, I like open my mouth and some of like the beer that I've just been drinking just like pours out and then as that's happening I burp and I'm like just stare at it with my, my jaw to the ground. Plus, you can claim that you got... Plus, if you look at you and you, people look at you, you can say that the other guy got worse off. Battle scars, right? But it's my hair. It'll He's grow back, sobbing. you big baby. I think it suits him. Until your hair comes back, it'll. It's a method of building character. The Dawi who have just watched this happen are just in absolute hysterics, just like. Oh yes, what the fuck just happened there? Like, how did his hair fall out? This is why you don't go drinking strange potions, lad. One of the Dowie who's already who's already bold is just like, ah, oh, lad, you just need to grow a good beard, and that will cut, that will cover that up. As long as you got some hair on one part of your head, you'll be fine. I think, I think about it this way. What hair you lose now, you'll gain twice as much later. He still starts snibbling and kind of... Uh, a, a drink gets brought over to him by the uh, Gottfried, the barman, who seems to have seen this and taken a bit of pity on him. And you note that there's also a shot there next to him. <clears throat> a shot next to his next to his flagon. <clears throat> uh, I start... While there's a big commotion going on, I... Leave without finishing my drink. I'm about halfway currently. Okay. So, um, the rest of the group, you may, um, if you wish, have another drink. Um, do another consume alcohol test. Um, I believe, um, Azor, if you were to have another drink of ale, it would be a um, plus one minus, uh, sorry, plus ten oh! minus ten, so it would be flat. Yeah, it's not good. Okay. <sighs> should I have fortune that? I feel like I should fortune that. It's, yeah. the first, it's the first fail on consume alcohol, so it's not... Yeah, all that happens is all your... And it's with plus ten to... Second failure! <laughs> okay, now, Azeroth takes a minus twenty to his weapon skill, ballistic skill, agility, and intelligence test. Well, Helmer will only take minus ten. So you're getting nicely pissed. The uh, the evening is going well. The uh, the drinks are flowing. By the way, that perception's to see if I notice anyone who might spot me or call me out during the uh, the, the trip to where I'm going. Sure. Um. Can everyone give me a perception test? There's a neg there's a minus ten. If you haven't <laughs> been drinking, He's not even looking. if you have He's... been drinking, it will be a minus ten plus your your negatives that you've acquired from drinking. 
Uh, he's not even. So right. just minus 10 for me. <laughs> yeah, as for it, that would be rolling with a minus 20. Hey, 25! <laughs> so, Billy Bob, for whatever reason at this moment in time, even though you can see Miss Wilhelma and Mr. Uh, Mr. Azor drinking heavily, they, they, they stop for a moment and just focus on you and kind of wonder why you're not drinking with them as the dwarves around uh, the area are getting more and more sloshed and more and more drink is ending up on the floor and in beards rather than actually in the dwarves themselves. Meanwhile, I'm still sober. So you have been spotted. Why are you off to the... What, actually, what time is it? Um, it would be four, five, about five, nearly six. Okay, so it's completely fine to, for him to go out. I thought it was going to be late, in which case it was going to ask him where he was going. But if it's not late, then I'll ignore it for the moment. I just kind of yelled, Don't get into any trouble! We're not bailing you out! I mean, these ones aren't sober enough for it. Oh, is that to me? That's not evil. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, I'm not drunk. I'm just tipsy. Wait, I'm drunk. Would they get any more drunk. negatives because I left while the guy was going bald or...? No, because you stopped to look around and see if anyone saw you. No, no, I was... I mean, uh, as I was walking through the streets, I'd see if I, like, noticed anyone that I know. Sorry. Also, didn't you stick... Oh, even clearer. Didn't you stick around to at least see this? No, I saw it, and then I, like, flipped spat out a bit of my drink and, like, and just stared in horror for a few seconds. But then as everyone was like, trying to, trying to cheer him up, oh, okay. then I was like, okay, and left my drink and left. So, I would probably say for you to find this place, um, whilst, you know, only going off of dis a description from a dodgy looking character, it'll probably take you an hour to find it. So, would anyone who wants to have another drink, uh, by all means, have another drink? I'm going to do the sensible thing. Are you I telling actually... me you're going to start doing that? Because we're going to have words if you do. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just a slight note to grab attention to the fact that this earth is drunk and I'm going to make another test and this is probably with another minus 10 or uh this is now a minus 20. oh i can't even succeed on that so i'm just <laughs> oh yeah you can, you can still roll you guys if you get the one in which case you do succeed <laughs> and miss wilhelm if you are having another drink uh then you <laughs> too <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Holy shit, he got a one. Well. <laughs> Everybody in the club is getting tipsy. I am positively fucking hammered, but it's alright. Sigmar Volt. Sigmar Volt. It's the music, clearly. I am dwarf and I'm taking a... Azuroff is literally just fucking drunk and lying with his head face first on the table, but occasionally just his head goes up and he joins it and just like listens to the conversation and just dick again. And as uh, as the drink really does flow and as the gods seem to not want you to roll on the stinking drunk table, um, we <laughs> we zoom out. And time passes, and as the camera zooms back in, you were met, Billy Bob, with... I need to change the music. We are no longer on Tavern. I actually haven't had to use this music before, I don't think. Dun, dun, dun. The town at night. As we are brought over to a map that I have not had to use before and did not prepare. Of course I did. 
bring you over to the town at night as you find yourself on a back alley uh, within the town of Siegfried Holt. Wait, Siegfried Holt is large enough to have back alleys? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there you go. Took a while for that. If they can have slums, I'm sure they can have back alleys. So where, whereabouts am I? Uh, if you want to place yourself over here. Ooh, help if I had the pointer. Over here. You know that you need to make your way down um, this alley and then essentially you need to come this way and that way until you reach a well. Would I be able to sort of go back up in front of this house, go to there and then come back down? No, there are actually houses that are built onto the side there. There's no alley. The houses have built, been built uh. so close together that there's enough room for a cat or a rat, but unfortunately not a halfling. Well, uh, I guess it's time to roll silent move. Wait, do I have to roll silent move every like so often, or is it just roll it and then walk to somewhere? Um, you'll basically uh, roll silent move. And then um, you'll see the people who are around. Well, they won't see you, I think is more the point. Why did that, why did you not go down? Ah, I think it's you, at the very least when you're in combat time, I think it's you roll it once and then you can make one move action per round. Oh, but like out of combat, it's just roll it and then. GM says roll it again you, later. Then I don't have to roll it again. Or GM goes roll it again because the guy's moved. Or you're doing something which would be dumb, like climbing over a pile of buckets. So, uh, you have made your silent move. Um, this will in basically be for your uh, for your time on this map. Um, there are a couple of beggars. They appear to be drifting in and out of sleep. It is a chilly evening, so they're not quite like unconscious yet. So they will both get a perception test. God, I'll give them a minus 10, but that's 4%. They fail, and they do not stir as you very, very quietly walk past them. You can see both the sleeping beggars as you essentially make your way down and towards uh, the place where you need to be. You were told that it is, a, it is at a house near a well. Is this where I just go down? Uh, should I roll a look to see if I choose the right way? Because I'd probably just flip the coin uh, in character. It's like, uh, this way or this way? This would be Tails. Actually, I'm going to go to Google and do it. I was going to say, roll 1d2. One is heads, two is tails. Heads! I can oh. Okay then, so I flip it, I go this way. I will stop and sort of like, look at the people that are there. I think that may have been spelt right, so... I will put something in your... in your... journal. Not in your journal, mm -hmm. under, your, under your background is where I shall... Well, I shall post it. And as you come over to these two individuals, um, we need to make a couple of tests for them to see if you scare them or if they are aware of you. However, they do have a minus 10 to their... Where the hell is it? There it is. Would I roll Silent Move again if I wanted to sneak up to one of them and whisper Silent Moose? Um, so you can't sneak up to them in this corridor. Uh, they don't hear you coming. Um, so you do pop round and you do see them like chatting. But this uh, this alleyway, um, it appears to be... They've picked it for this reason. That you can't... It's a dead end. You can't come from an, any other... There's only one entrance. Um, you have to come round that corner. 
But if they're chatting to each other, would they be staring at the entrance or? There, well, it seems it, you'd almost gather that it's their job to watch this exact entrance. So they are talking to each other, but you can definitely see. Like, if, you peer around the corner um, and they don't notice you. And you can see they are looking in that direction, but they're chatting there. You wouldn't be able to sneak up on them. But if you were to attack them, you'd get a, you'd get a surprise round. Let's put it that way. But as Can for... I take a few steps closer before they notice me and then whisper it? Sort of not too close to them. You can walk out of the shadows and whisper it, sure. Well, I'll stand just at the edge of the light and then whisper it. Yeah. And then sort of gauge their reaction. So what do you what do you whisper out of the darkness? Jacket moose. Oh, I see. One of Muggy's uh one of Muggy's contacts, are ya? Um, rules are you cause trouble you die you snitch on this place you your friends and your family die um, cause any problems for the uh, well for the more powerful individuals they'll torture your ass and make you wish that you were dead um, by all means welcome into uh, the black market and they knock on the door behind them and the door opens and you are led or you are looking into a room where I there is a staircase take it all in for a few seconds. there's a staircase that leads down um, the room itself is quite plain and just an, almost an ordinary shack but it appears as if at one point there was a a storage um, cellar or Perhaps maybe even an entrance to the sewer system, or you're not quite sure, but there is definitely a, an open hole in the floor and a staircase that leads down. As soon as I hear the, the dogs bark, I like shudder a little bit, but then like hopefully they, if they don't notice me, I'll just sort of play off and just walk down normally. If they do notice me, I'll just be like, I'll just shrug and awkwardly go down. They don't really, um, they are watching you, but they're not really like, if you look at them directly, they'll just give you a puzzled look as, why aren't you going in? Don't be scared, little one. I'm sure they won't bite much. I was sort of like nervous to say, huh, thank you, and go in. Okay, so as you go down into the black market of Siegfried Hoft, um, to see what there is, um, you go down the stairs and you are led into almost, um, it appears as if they've almost dug this themselves, or part of the stonework looks older and part looks newer. It's quite well lit once you actually get down the staircase and underground more. Um, as you come out it's almost as if you come into a market square um, but built underground there are large stone pillars that hold the roof up um, and there are several what appear to be old buildings or there are definitely dwellings that have been built into the rock and have stonework and uh, appear to have some like shop fronts attached but most of it is just like shanty um, you see some some dodgy looking fellas with a with a rug in front of them and they're selling some what you could probably quite easily put together as stolen goods um another area is selling other trinkets and oddities that for these prices you definitely gather that these may have come from someone else's pocket uh do i see anyone who's sort of similar to the guys at the gate there are a few um, enforcers, like low. They're not very well equipped, but they do appear to be scattered about the place to 
you watch them for a moment and you do see them like watching other people as they go about their business here. Uh, I will go up to one of them and ask, is, is it okay to smoke in here? Um, before you even bother going to go and ask him, you can see that certain stools have smoke billowing out from uh, from within their their um, small tents that they've set up, and other people walk about with pipes that are quite clearly smoking something, and the waft of different incenses and uh, sp tobaccos, none that you were particularly pleased to smell. Um, most of the smells down here are quite. Uh, it's not fine. Um, Moot tobacco they're smoking, that's for damn sure. I'll just sort of like look around and are there any stores that might be selling something I might be interested in? How long would you like to spend in this area in the black market? Because I think that'd probably be something we'd need to look into the book. And have a look like what you would be interested in. Um, I'd probably spend a few hours at least. Okay. Maybe till the early morning. Okay, fair enough. Um, so as uh, Billy Bob walks through the black market of Siegfried Hoft, looking at all the wares, lockpicks, burglary tools stolen items there are even some poisons and other such unscrupulous items we go back we zoom out and we go back to the wolf's head inn um, would anyone else like to do anything in this episode um, would any of our drinkers like another drink to see if they have to roll on the on the stinking drunk table if not we can end there they they'd need more drinks than they've had. Like, I think Azurus needs to fail once more and he becomes stinking drunk. Or, hang How on, is it, equal, he fail? is it equal or over? You have to fail four times. Oh, okay, then Then no, he's he's only failed twice. Yeah, he would have, it would have been a third if he hadn't got that nat one. That one has, yeah. I am going to roll a hand, a former uh, Akin. You do, because you did do a performer before, didn't you? Um, yeah. As you do stand up and get onto the um, onto the stage, people do applaud you and you do um, pick up spirits and uh, you raise the spirits in the room. Although the spirits are running pretty high at the moment with the dwarfs singing. and I mean, there are far more dwarfs in here than um, than regular folk. I will tell you what, as you do your song. So if there's any money collected, it goes towards my future stay. I will roll a 1d100 to see um, what the dwarves are like. They rolled a 1, so they are not feeling very generous at the moment. They are they are not quite. Um, so you find that there are sil uh, seven silver coins in the collection pot as it goes around. Which is very stingy for a dwarf, in fact. Um, if you want to roll another perform chest, uh, check, then you can, by all means. That's fortune, that. Oh, well, I don't make money. Um, so did you sing a song that's... Um, that's far more based in, in the, the um, myths and legends of Stirling. It would normally be quite a good tune for a, for a tavern in Stirling. But with all the dwarves here, they kind of stop listening. And you, you hear far more of a, a roar as the dwarves are trying to be heard over the music. And if there is uh, nothing else that um, the group would like to discuss, or any shenanigans the that would like to go alcohol. on, <laughs> we can end the session off there because I wouldn't don't really want to go into tomorrow. Um, 
until we have the whole group. I just want to see if the alcoholics get drunk. Like, actually stinking drunk. So, our, uh, our two alcoholics, would you like to have another drink? Or two? Eh, one for the road. You're going to be fine. If the only one who's really got a concern is Azareth, who fails twice, which isn't hard. Hmm. Because he fails once, then auto fails the next one, effectively. Nope, I fail this one. I seem to win, fail, win, fail. Also, you wouldn't have gotten plus 10. No, I, I, I passed the last one. No, yeah, because you failed once already. So oh, because you failed, still a fail. The plus 10 gets burnt out to a, to a straight roll. It's until the effects wear off. So as you as you start as you are very pissed now, um, Hagrid runs off and uh, he goes in. He gets uh, another keg, and he brings it out. And all the dwarves kind of oh oh Hagrid, you've you've been hiding this from us. Oh well, get it cracked open. Come on, don't wake us waiting. And uh, they all seem very 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 like happy and um would. Our two drinkers like to consume some Bugman's Ale Triple X. If I could find the rules for it. Is this the one that counts as like two? Um, so if you're sober and you drink, uh, if you drink Bugman's Ale, you have to make a very hard uh, test not to be stinking drunk. So it basically puts you, is like drinking... Well, it's the strongest drink in the game, basically. Can't find it now. I had it, and now I can't. Found it. It can. It, yeah, it's a minus twenty consume alcohol test to avoid getting stinking drunk. Yeah, and I think it makes you like if you fail, you are stinking drunk. That's there's no there's no going through the. Uh, the yeah, process. it automatically counts as four drinks. It's page 124. Yep, I've just found it. On the bright side, we're immune to fear for 1d10 hours. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Bloody expensive. Where is it? 50 gold coins. Miss Wilhelma, would you would you partake in something that if you fail you will get stinking drunk and have to roll on the on the chart, or would you like to call it a night? This is the good stuff. We're getting shit faced anyway. Let's go all in. Yeah, this is the good stuff. It's instant shit faced in a roll. Shit faced. You were blind. Close. You were blind, stinking drunk. So, would you please roll for me a one d uh, one d hundred, please? Now, is now the question is: Is Azareth getting involved in this too? Well, I've only had a few ales, officer. No yeah, effect. it's not it's not nearly as bad as I as I was hoping. So you, you were so you were so drunk that the police would come and try and like shoo you away. Oh no, he's so drunk he's coming around to being sober again. Uh, like you can walk 30, in a straight line. Minus thirty on ing agility, weapon skill, ballistic skill, and int tests. But I imagine you'll be going to bed shortly after this. The only like one of the best ones is, are you looking at me? Hang on, are you looking at my halfling? I like that one. Jay, is Azareth going to partake in the Bugmans? I think we may have lost our Jay. No, I think he he said something about going to get a snack, which he said is another Discord, but uh, oh, BRB, that's him, all right. Okay, it's so I'll put in the actual chat. We will end the episode there for the stream anyway. Um, so thank you very much for joining me here for this fairly short um, episode into the Warhammer Fantasy world. Um, I hope you can join us again next time when we should have the whole group together. So, yeah, 
take care everyone and bye bye for now <laughs>